Good morning and welcome to Bank Holiday Monday Prayer. And it's a beautiful morning here and I pray it's such a morning where you are this morning. So we begin by first taking a deep breath and breathing in the rays of Brother Sun and just relax and remind ourselves that we are coming into the presence of God a God who wants to help each one of us. So on this Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK, we light this light in the name of all names, our Holy Father, Mother God, who creates life in the name of Jesus, the Cosmic Christ, who loves life and in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life. And in the name of Mother Earth and Mother Mary, who nurtured the divine in all lives, and in the name of all faith traditions and none, we welcome you to this table of love, where today we remember justice and peace within the whole world. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our opening prayer this morning from our little book of Celtic prayer reads, you have searched me and you know me, O oh God. You know when I sit and when I lie down. And our opening prayer and thanksgiving reads, Thanks be to you, O oh God, that I have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. May today be a day of blessing, O oh God of every gift, a day of new beginnings given. Help me to avoid sin and the source of every sin to forsake. And as the mist scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from my soul, O God. So now we have the prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai, and we read, We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning we commune with the angel of life, saying, Angel of life, enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. You now contemplate trees as you feel yourself absorbing vital healing energy forces from the trees and forests of the Creator's garden. So let us just visualize coming into the forests of God and allowing the energies of the trees to just embrace us and share with us the energy forces that will allow us to balance all of our chakras, all of our energy wheels in our body, renewing our depleted energy and strengths. Amen. And now for our first reading, and it's from Jesus Now, and it's titled The Risk of Discipleship, and in the Christian Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, verse 58, we read, Forces, sorry, foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. It is not difficult to make beautiful, generous statements in the excitement and ecstasy of some new commitment. The expressions of gratitude and the pledges of love and loyalty that result from some revelation or insight into God's redeeming love are precious indeed. They are nonetheless often shallow and immature. There are so many who accept Christ as Saviour and Redeemer and verbally at least honour him as Lord, who never mature into disciples. Apart from being personally solaced and comforted, the lives of these people never change very much. They have never really become Christ's disciples and servants. 
They are oblivious, not ready or willing to pay the price involved in the matter of discipleship. Of course, there is a price to pay, or so it seems to you, who have never, as Christ did, beheld the glories of God's kingdom, because you have not seen or can possibly comprehend the full meaning of your redemption and the life that awaits you. And the things of this world, though they are trinkets. And just bear with me a second. There we go. When compared to what is in store for you, are still very important. Discipleship involves a risk, or so it will appear in your eyes. Jesus can at this time only assure you that it is a risk well worth taking. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain in following after him. If you really believe in him, you will you will, inspired and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, fling caution to the winds and dare to trust in his words and to obey his commandments. He does not guarantee perpetual happiness or ecstatic feelings. He promises instead that there will be conflict and pain, heavy burdens and difficult times. He promises as well, Jesus does, that you will never be alone, that he is with you always, and that he will grant you his joy. Amen. Wow, what a beautiful reading. What a beautiful reading. You see many, I've seen it as I'm sure you have, they're full of ecstasy. Even on the day we take our vows, as St. Benedict said, it only takes a minute to read your vows or promises to God, the day when you're consecrated to God. But then he concludes by saying that it takes a lifetime to live by them. And that includes living with the joys, the sorrows, the heartaches and the pains. But being a monastic is not about being in ecstasy 24-7. It's about embracing God through the mundane trials of each day and often volunteering to do the most difficult. Mm, the most difficult, not the easiest options. Often it's choosing to do the most difficult. So let us not be persuaded to give up or throw the towel in when faced with serious situations, trials and disappointments. Let us just fall on our knees and ask the Lord Jesus to come into our heart and surrender everything to him. Or maybe you've done that, but then you begin to take back your power and you begin to worry and get afraid again. We're only human and we make mistakes. And God is a loving father, mother, who understands us in our humanity and will not abandon us, but their love will protect us and sustain us. Our next reading is a reading from the little booklet that I receive each quarter. And from Monday, the 29th of August, it reads, Overcoming Temptation. He ran from the house. Genesis 39, verse 12. The Bible says, Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. 
She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her, and he kept out of her way so much as possible. But one day, however, no one else was around. When he went in to do his work, she came and she grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, Come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. Note the words. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day. Joseph's temptation kept happening when he was around a certain person, Potiphar's wife, and it kept happening when he was in a certain place, Potiphar's house. So he ran, not because he was weak, but because he was wise. He understood that if you hang around temptation too long, you're playing with fire and setting yourself up to get burnt. So what people and what places do you need to avoid? What sources of temptation do you need to remove from your life? in order to live victoriously. Remember the old Kenny Rogers song, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk away, and know when to run. God isn't dishonored when you run, you're dishonored when you don't. That's a good reading, isn't it? You're dishonored when you don't run. <clears throat> but we always give Jesus the last word. And in Sarah's young little book, Jesus Calling, we have a message for this Monday morning from the very heart of Jesus. Demonstrate your trust in me by sitting quietly in my presence. Put aside all that is waiting to be done and refuse to worry about anything. This sacred time together strengthens you and prepares you to face whatever the day will bring. <coughs> Excuse me. By waiting with me before you begin the day's activities, you proclaim the reality of my living presence. This act of faith waiting before working is noted in the spirit world where your demonstration of trust weakens principalities and the powers of darkness the most effective way to resist evil is to draw near to me when you need to take my action i will guide you clearly through this through my spirit and my word the world is so complex and overstimulating that you can easily lose your sense of direction. Doing countless unnecessary activities will dissipate your energy. And when you spend time with me, I will restore your sense of direction. As you look to me for guidance, I enable you to do less but accomplish more. Oh, wow. So let us now come into the presence of God. And let us bring all that may weigh us down, the hurts, the trials and tribulations, our family and loved ones. Maybe we wish to give thanks to God and to bless God's holy name for answering our prayers of long ago. This morning we pray for Sister Sue and we pray for Sarah who's still in hospital and we pray today that they will refer her to the mental health team for the support that she needs. We thank you Lord and here we don't forget James, her son, and we remember Paul and his son Ben. We remember also all the brothers and sisters of our community and all who are gathered here today. I want to remember our dear brother Harry 
who's been having it tough of late, but he's beginning to see the, the light in the Creator's garden. So we thank you, Lord, for watching over Harry. We ask you also to watch over Lisa, our dear sister Nancy, our sisters Eleanor and Elizabeth, dear Miriam in New Zealand, and Elaine in Peter Lee. The community have many friends who've been kind to us and who've walked alongside us in the dark days. We remember them. They are too many to mention, as are the requests we receive for prayer. So we bring all our prayer requests in our prayer books. We bring all who are gathered here and we bring the many whom we have promised to pray for. So let us now come into this beautiful Cathedral of Light and thank Almighty God and Spirit for justice and peace, that it will prevail upon earth and all of creation today. And we thank Sister Sun, sorry, Brother Sun, for this beautiful sunny day. <coughs> we pray for the many here in the United Kingdom who are celebrating their August bank holiday, the last bank holiday before Christmas. We pray that they have a lovely time with family and friends, and especially as most of the children go back to school on Tuesday, to give the parents, and the mums and dads and grandparents, a special time to be with their young ones. Let us just release from our heart all our worries, our fears and our concerns about justice and peace in this beautiful world that man is turning into a desert by acts of violence and greed, selfishness and a lack of human compassion. So we now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of negativity, evil and despair. For thine is the coming, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> this day and this night, may we know, O oh God, the deep peace of the running wave the deep peace of the flowing air, the deep peace of the quiet earth, the deep peace of the shining stars, and the deep peace of the Son of Peace. Be yours. Amen. And as I blow out this flame, I blow the peace, the love and the joy of the cosmic Christ into all your hearts and into all those whom we have remembered today. Amen. So we say, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum. Om shanti, solo di carita, salam alaikum. And may the peace of our God reign supreme in your heart this day and that you become acolytes for unity and peace in this beautiful world we call creation. So thank you for joining me <clears throat> on this beautiful summer's Monday morning. And I pray that you are having a good day. If it is your bedtime, then I want you to sleep well. If it is your day like us here, then I want you to have a beautiful day too. 
relaxed in the knowledge that you are loved. Namaste. May the peace of God reawaken your heart to the I am presence of God. God bless you. See you again soon. Peace.